we we try and make our home a place that grandchildren will like to come so you know um we had to start again building up some toys in our home for example <laughs> um yeah. and that doesn't have to be an expensive thing i think most of what i've got i've bought second hands from something like gumtree or you know facebook market book or whatever marketplace whatever you've got in your particular culture but we try to sow to their interests we try to have things around that they will like to do and we try to encourage them in having a go at things like crafts or Clive's done woodwork with the kids I think yeah. we, we we've always believed even with our own children in, in giving that opportunity to them to stretch a little bit beyond what they think they can do and so we try and do that with our grandchildren too as well yeah, yeah. I think your grandchildren need to see you as enabling mm -hmm. that you you draw out the best in them you you learn to spot trends and traits and interests in them and then you sow to those interests and you invest in them yeah. so um i think sometimes some grandparents try to live out their own life that they didn't have through their grandchildren mm -hmm. well that's the last thing you want to do you're not trying to sort of live through them by proxy or something like that you're trying to release them to be the people that they're called to be, that God's made them to be. It's not a rerun of your life because it didn't go well for you the first time. You're trying to leave all that behind at the cross. What you're trying to do is release the, the gifting and the calling and the talents and the interests in your grandchildren and in your children to to, to serve them and to, to bring them up. And yeah. I think if there's any one phrase we, well, there's a couple of phrases we use with, with our grandchildren oh. and with our children and with our disciples, really, and it's too couple of phrases we use call them up higher and win hearts mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what you're trying to do you're trying to win their heart mm -hmm. and you're trying to call them up higher what you're not trying to do is lay the law down mm -hmm. and especially when the parents are not there and you're trying to babysit and get them now you just do what i tell you because i'm your grandpa mm -hmm. parent and you've got to do what i say <laughs> there's a there's a line in the bible that says in hebrews the law made nothing perfect and that is the problem with law. It makes nothing perfect. We've got over 11,000 acts of parliament and all the laws they contain in this country. And our country is far from perfect. If laws could make the world perfect, it would be perfect already. There's no shortage of laws out there. But the problem is a good law meeting fallen human nature never has a good outcome. Fallen human nature always manages to, to break the law or to find a way around it. And the law makes nothing perfect. So if you come in as a lawmaker, as a grandparent, you lay the law down to your children or your grandchildren, then you're never going to get the best from them. What you've got to do is get inside and change their hearts, their desires, their wants, their thinking, their motivations, their values. That's you're working at the inside. You're sowing better things in them so that from the inside outwards, they're different people doing the right thing and, you know, what you're really after is when when you're not there, mum and dad aren't there, they do the right thing for the right reason yeah. in the right way because it is right. Yeah. You know? And then you can be confident that when you're not there, it's still going to going to work out right for yeah. them and, and so on. So mm. I've seen so many grandparents try to lay the law down and it, that, that, it never works. It's a bad idea. It's a, it, You're trying a shortcut and it's, it seems like it's an easier job. Just do what I say. Well, just do what I say does not work. Yeah. And it won't work as a grandparent. It won't work as a pastor. It won't work as a parent or as a boss or anything else like that. You've really got to win people's hearts. Yeah. And you do that by doing all the sort of things that Sally was talking about. We, we call it putting money in the bank. You invest in your children and your grandchildren. You do things that interest them, that um, are important to them. And then when you have to make a withdrawal from the bank, yeah. You've got a lot of goodwill there and they'll say, OK, Grandpa, OK, Grandma, I'll do that. I don't really want to, but you've been so good to me. I will do it. That, that's, yeah. the, that's the response you're looking for. But you've got to put a lot in just to get a little out yeah. <laughs> in that sense. And I, I think I see with parents and with grandparents many times, especially with high powered parents, if I can call it like that. They're so busy on their own careers or they're so busy on their own agenda. The, the grandchildren or the children will play down there and I will do this over here. That is not family life. Mm. Um, I was at a men's conference once teaching them how to do this. And in the end, I got down with the translator. We got on the stage and, said, and we had two little cars and they push their car along and you push your car along. You have to get down on the floor and play with them. Yes. And you can't do that if you're worried about your dress, your appointment, your 
Zoom call you're about to make, the money you want to make that flows on that deal. <laughs> You've got to put all of that to one side. You've got to enter into their world mm-hmm. and do what they do at the level they do it and be a friend alongside them. I, I play alongside our less than one-year-old, one-year-old grandson. I sit on the floor with him and we try to put shapes in the sort and we try to build things up and knock them down. That's how you form a good relationship. Now, we're doing plenty of other things, but lying on the floor is is what I choose to do in that moment. I think a lot of parents feel that's somehow beneath them, and certainly grandparents do, especially if you're a bit creaky when you get down on the floor. It's not easy to get up, but that's what you do. You get down on the floor with them and you play with them. And from that very early age, you go through life with them, and as their interests change, you follow their interests and you try to reflect them and... You're always trying to connect with them through through their world and what interests them. And that's how you win hearts. And here's a good phrase I learned. Here's a good phrase I learned about parenting and grandparenting. If they don't get it from you, they'll go somewhere else to get it. Mm. That's true. Mm. And if your teenage grandson doesn't get approval at home, he'll find a gang and a gang leader who will give him approval. And that's bad news for everybody. If you're teenage daughter doesn't find love and warmth and affection she'll throw herself at the first guy that throws shows her some warmth and affection even if their parents are giving them these things i think we're like the backup aren't we yeah Yeah. you can give that extra level that consistent level you know uh, um that often parents are busy at that stage in their life they have got careers that they're giving themselves to and we're still working as grandparents and, I, and you are too you know <laughs> yeah. so but I, I think if we value the right things we make the right choices and you know sometimes Clive and I talk to each other we're at that stage in life where we say goodness me what have we done with our lives you know have we done what we wanted to do for the Lord I'm sure there's more to do still but we say to each other the bottom line is whatever we've done in serving the Lord and in his kingdom it comes back to what Joshua says, doesn't it? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So we could have won thousands to Christ. That would be wonderful. But if our own children perhaps are struggling in the Lord or our grandchildren are losing their way in the faith, that matters to us more than those thousands, actually. Sure. And so that helps us to think, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm going to give this hour to my grandkid that's just come and knocked on the door as they're going past. And I'm I'm going to sit and do a jigsaw with them. And then they'll probably start talking about what it is that's on their hearts. Yeah. Or I'm going to read them a, a, a book. Yeah. And whatever it is, I think we we look, we try to find ways that we can have fun with them. But fun that's got a little bit of a you know purpose behind it as well. Yeah, yeah. For sure.